Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And we begin with a look at radar. A line of showers and storms making its way into the area. Mike will have a timeline of these approaching storms and how they might affect the roads. Making news this morning, some countries are now pausing injections of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. Why that is causing concern amongst health experts and officials around the world. And outside with live cam, in advance of those storms, it's drizzly out there. But an even bigger concern might be what's behind those storms later today. We'll talk about that coming up. Good morning, everybody. It is Wednesday. March 17th, happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for joining us. We have our green on. We do, we are in the spirit, but all eyes are on the sky right now. And what could happen later on today behind these storms, Mike Coaster Hayes? Yeah, first things first, as far as rain, uh, it, it's messy out there this morning. That light mist and kind of a light rain all morning long. Then we've got thunderstorms up to the north. Uh, some of those are getting close to being severe, just north of our area. Not quite, but still some high winds and uh, maybe a little bit of hail that's well up to the north and as you can see the roads are kind of damp around and again it was just this call it light rain or heavy mist out there but here's the big picture and this is the front that is working its way on through the area and as you can see first of all here in town this is all just a lot of uh, kind of light rain but some of the uh, showers some heavy rain is already moving into Kerrville Lakey and notice how yeah there are a couple of thunderstorms there on top of the rain but the severe thunderstorm watch northern Gillette County just north of our area, northern Blanco County, so basically on the, the northern fringes of our viewing area. But notice how this is all kind of moving to the east, but also sliding down to the southeast. So this is going to continue to work its way uh, in our direction, in the direction of San Antonio, and move through here within uh, about the next hour. It's going to be moving out fairly quickly, so by the end of the morning drive, most of this rain should be east of here, but we will get some uh, pretty good rain, like I said, within the, the next hour or so. Eight miles visibility out there at the airport. A little bit of fog is trying to be picked up out ahead of this, and uh, around the area, just to kind of hints of it there. Now, as far as temperatures, we are at 70. It's very warm and humid. Big, uh, big thing off to the northwest that Mark was alluding, alluding to later on today is the wind, which is going to be shifting around to the northwest. Uh, 15 mile per hour winds in Kerrville, 17 Rock Springs. Then we have gusts on top of that. It is going to be extremely windy today. And so red flag warnings are posted, go into effect at 10 o'clock up until 7 o'clock. Kind of the western two thirds of our viewing area, including San Antonio and then going out to the hill country and down to the south. Very high fire danger and then also wind advisories for a good chunk of the hill country and our western counties because with these winds that are going to be gusting 35 40 miles per hour and the bone dry air coming in in behind it I'll, just a laundry list of allergens out there most everything except hackberry is on the uh, the low side temperatures we are in the uh, again upper 60s low 70s right now we are going to see temperatures drop down as this front passes so about 60 right around nine o'clock then we'll start to rebound we're going to have showers and thunderstorms this morning and then those are going to continue to come to an end and work their way off to the east. Clearing skies in behind. Gorgeous day. However, very windy. Again, winds 15, 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that. Great weather for the next couple of days. We'll talk more about that in just a couple of minutes. Getting ready to hit the roads. Traffic Authority Samuel King. Any problems yet, sir? Uh, we do have, uh, Mike, a serious uh, crash. This is a 410 uh, at the crossroads. You can see some of the activity there uh, moving. There is some traffic now moving in those eastbound lanes. They had been uh, closed there for a little bit, but you can see in the distance there a lot of uh, traffic, uh, a lot of police activity and a lot of law enforcement activity uh, on the scene there. So let's take a closer look at this scene uh, on the maps. Again, this is uh, Loop 14 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. You can see a bit of the delay on uh, Fredericksburg Road. You also can see it there on uh, 410 and even I-10 for some example. So if you're, if you're someone who travels in that area early this morning, uh, you might want to uh, avoid this area right now. Uh, taking a look at a wider view, that is really the only major incident on the road. So uh, right now, uh, pretty a uh, lot of green, but again, as Mike was saying, there are some wet roads and the like. Uh, let's take a look at quick look at the travel time on I-10 this morning. 26 minutes might be a little higher than normal with uh, some of the, the showers and rain and then the incident, of course, there at the crossroads area. Uh, once you're inside 1604, looking at 
uh, 12 to 13 minutes, which is uh, the fairly uh, normal time. And here's a look uh, once again here. This is a uh, 410 at the crossroads, a uh, major crash there uh, at Fredericksburg Road. We're working to get some more information on that and we'll bring you an update coming up. Mark, Stephanie. Natalie, breaking news. San Antonio police are on the scene of a deadly shooting on the northwest side. This is happening in the 4900 block of Northwest Loop 410 at the Home Suites Inn. Our Sarah Costa is live on the scene with the latest. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, and I just spoke with the sergeant with the San Antonio Police Department, and this scene relatively new. They got the call just after, just a little after 3 o'clock this morning. What we know at this point is that a man in his 30s has been killed in a shooting. Police say that another, the suspect walked into the hotel room, and there was another woman in there, and the victim, and the victim and the suspect got into some kind of argument. It appears that they knew each other, and that's when the police say that the suspect shot that man four times, once in the head and once in the belly. Um, police say that they are still waiting on a search warrant so they can search that room. They haven't been able to confirm whether or not narcotic narcotics or anything else like that was involved. They do have a couple of witnesses that they are talking to that woman that was in the hotel room and other witnesses that are staying in the nearby rooms. Uh, the medical examiner still has not arrived. They are waiting on that search warrant. And once they say they can get in and break down the crime scene, the medical examiner will be able to come in at that point. So they'll be here for at least another hour or so processing that scene. Live from the Northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. As coronavirus cases surge across Europe, at least 16 countries are now temporarily suspending injections of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine, while experts investigate reports of blood clots. And the pause is sparking some concern with health experts and officials around the world. CNN's John Lawrence has the latest. We mustn't actually take rapid action that may damage the vaccine rollout, which is so dangerous. As Italy enters a new partial lockdown, registering its highest daily death increase since late January, France faces a third wave in the pandemic. And Poland's third wave accelerates, with cases up 44% from just last week. Health officials are concerned about a growing number of countries pausing injections of the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine amid reports of blood clots. I don't think that... Um that they're making the right decision, and I hope that they will reverse the decision. These are very rare thrombo ev events or blood clots. Uh, we need to evaluate these very, very carefully. There is no known link between the vaccine and these events, and AstraZeneca says there's no evidence of increased risk of blood clots. The company says fewer than 40 clot events have been reported out of more than 17 million people who received a shot in the EU and UK. It's important that people who suspect that they have a side effect after vaccination report this to the National Medicines Regulator or to a healthcare professional who can help them to do so. Now the European Medicines Agency worries this may affect people wanting to get vaccinated. We are worried that, um, that there may be an effect on the trust of the, of the vaccines. I'm John Lawrence reporting. And here at home, the seven-day average is now at 174 coronavirus cases per 24 hours. It's a slight uptick since the previous report. One new death was also reported. We continue, continue to experience improvement in our local hospitals. 206 COVID-19 patients are now being treated. 84 are in the intensive care unit and 47 are on ventilators. 438, 70 degrees. And still have President Biden pushing back against criticism he is getting over his immigration policies amid a recent surge of activity at the southern border. Plus, small businesses will continue to see a bit of a break thanks to lawmakers in Washington. And taking a look outside with live cam, a messy morning at 70 degrees, light rain in some areas, and heavy rain later on. We're going to check in with Mike later on. 
And welcome back. It's 441. President Biden is urging would-be migrants to stay home amid the influx of activity along the U.S. southern border that has prompted mounting criticism of his immigration policies. The president says that his message to migrants is clear. Don't come over. The number of unaccompanied teens and children who have been taken into U.S. custody along the U.S.-Mexico border has shot up in recent weeks. Biden says that the government was sending back many of the adults that are now attempting the border crossing. The president is also pushing back on the notion that migrants are heading to the border due to his new policies. Lawmakers in Washington looking into extending an important PPP deadline for businesses. The deadline for small businesses to apply for a loan from the Pay Paycheck Protection Program is March 31st. Lawmakers approved another $7 billion for the program, which was included in that big COVID relief bill. But Representatives say the additional funds are of little use if the March deadline isn't pushed. There's now bipartisan support for legislation that would extend the program to May 31st and offer an additional 30-day period. The national average price of gas is nearing $3 a gallon. AAA says people in the U.S. are paying 14% more at the pump this month than they did in February. Right now, the average price for a gallon of unleaded is $2.87. AAA reports that experts are seeing a tightening of supply and an increase in demand. In San Antonio, we're paying about $2.40 a gallon on average. It's game day, Spurs fans. Our Spurs are back in action tonight. They're coming off a much-needed win against the Detroit Pistons. Tonight, they take on the Chicago Bulls. Tip-off set for 7 o'clock at the United Center in Chicago. Hoping for another win. Me too. Go Spurs go 434, 70 degrees for now. A mother-daughter duo being accused of stealing the homecoming crown by accessing sensitive information about other students online. Details next. And welcome back. It's 446. A Pensacola mother and her 17-year-old daughter were arrested after being accused of stealing votes for homecoming queen. ABC's Mona Kassar Abdi has the details of today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the mother-daughter duo accused of stealing the homecoming crown. The system is set up for the persons who have access uh, not to allow persons to have that. There's a degree of trust that has to go there. Officials say assistant principal Laura Rose Carroll and her daughter, 17-year-old Emily Rose Grover, illegally accessed other students' accounts so Grover would be elected homecoming queen. The investigation into the scheme started in November after the Escambia County School District reported hundreds of students' accounts at Tate High School had been hacked. Those accounts containing sensitive information like medical history, test scores, and personal information. School officials also discovered 117 homecoming court votes, all cast from the same IP address. So what kind of consequence could this mother-daughter duo face? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Right now it's 447. Could be an interesting morning for both Samuel King and Mike Ostrich. That's true. It's a little messy out there, Samuel. Yeah, we already have a, a major uh, crash here. This is at near 410 at the crossroads, 410 at Fredericksburg to be exact. And you can kind of see uh, the view there from a trans guide. Uh, some traffic getting through there. There have been several uh, lanes blocked on, on this uh, uh, around uh, 410 and uh, Fredericksburg Road, but things, uh, at least some traffic is getting through there, but this is still a major crash. As we take a look here uh, at the map, this is a 410, as I mentioned, and Fredericksburg Road. We still have this sort of icon here that denotes uh, some lanes are blocked here on a 410. Uh, this is Fredericksburg Road, this is uh, 410, and then this is I-10. So right there at the crossroads area. Uh, let's take a wider look at the, the region. Not too much else going on. This is really the only uh, icon we're, we're seeing here at this hour, so that's a, a good thing. Uh, taking a look at uh, Fredericksburg Road, how this is impacting your travel time a little higher than normal. Uh, 14 minutes heading uh, northbound, 15 minutes heading southbound on Fredericksburg Road down toward Woodlawn, so that's something to watch out for. And again, here is a closer look at that uh, situation there. Again, 410 uh, around the crossroads, Fredericksburg Road, several lanes of 410 eastbound closed this morning, and we'll continue to watch this situation and get some more info on what's going on out there, guys. Thank you, Samuel. Mike spent a good portion of yesterday telling us storms would be on the way. By this morning, they are. Mike, do you think the severe stuff's going to stay to our north? Yes, it, it, that's the way it's looking. And as a matter of fact, the uh, severe thunderstorm watch that was posted for kind of the northern fringes of our area, a lot of that has just been uh, canceled because 
as it's kind of settled down. The atmosphere is not really conducive to it, but we do have a lot of uh, kind of, you know, mist out there. The roads are definitely on the, the damp side this morning. And here's what it looks like on radar. And as you can see, first of all, this is the what's left over as far as that watch is concerned. So a lot of that was canceled. The line is continuing to work its way basically to the east to southeast, moving through Kerrville, uh, Fredericksburg, Lakey. And you can see there are a couple of thunderstorms in there. And there's going to be some high winds associated with this. Uh, one of the uh, reports about an hour ago from the Weather Service said that everything was just below criteria for severe, but still very windy and maybe even a little bit of hail can be associated with some of these storms. But they are moving along at a pretty darn good clip at about 40 miles per hour. That whole line is working its way down there. Now there is still going to be the slight chance or I should say marginal chance for a couple of uh, strong to severe storms in our eastern counties. And this would be as this progresses later on this morning further off to the east. As far as visibility, Casterville does have some uh, fog, Kerrville a little bit of fog and just a bits of it here and there, but things are going to be clearing out. So as far as what goes on later on today, again, red flag warning in effect for basically western two thirds of our area. It's kind of bounded by 10 and uh, 37 with the high winds, very dry air, and then also the wind advisory for basically the hill country and then out to the west later on today. Temperatures right now are 70 in town. Kerrville, though, the front's moved through. It's down to 56 degrees. So once that front moves through, our temperature is going to be dropping down about 10 degrees in the next few hours. We'll hit our low right around going for 9 o'clock this morning, uh, about 60 here in town. Then we're going to start to rebound up into the uh, upper 70s. So this computer model has this moving very quickly. It's coming through. If you're planning on doing your morning commute in a, roughly the next hour here in town, that's when you're going to be hitting or running into the, the meat of this rain, if you will. And then that moves out of here very quickly. So by 7, 730, everything is pretty much off to the east of San Antonio and all of our uh, eastern counties will be getting this. And this again continues to race off to the east. Skies clear out in behind it. We had a great stretch of weather and as far as the dry air humidity dew points are well up in the upper 60s low 70s right now and as the front is moving through notice how the difference here in this model 47 and hondo for dew point 70 here in town and then that dry air comes on in here and it continues to really really dry out and it is it's going to be comfortable, but it, again, it's going to be somewhat of a dangerous situation as far as the the fire danger around here. And it's also going to be on the breezy side tomorrow. 73 at noon. So again, the, the temperature profile is we're about at 70, upper 60s right now. We'll drop to 60 at 9 o'clock, then come back up to 73 degrees. Things will continue to clear out. Good looking day, but very windy. 78 for a high temperature. And then tomorrow, it's going to be much more pleasant. It will still be on the breezy side. 72 degrees, only 69 on Friday. Look at those low temperatures, mid to even lower 40s. Good looking through most all the weekend, a couple of clouds by Sunday. But again, if you're getting, getting ready to leave or your commute is about six o'clock, give or take here in town, that's when you're going to hit the majority of the rain. Okay, well, be careful out there. Thank and you, we, li Mike. we like the green pocket square yes. and the, uh, <laughs> the cufflinks too. Yes, I, I figured if, nice. if, I, if it keys out, I can always Move it. Yeah, it can yeah. be like a little ground hog and stick back down in there. I think, I think it just shows up like an off color, like a blue. <laughs> I've never heard you compare a pocket square well, to a ground hog. <laughs> blue, too. The yeah. original color of our 452, about 70 degrees. And coming up next, a new documentary featuring the Queen of Soul, showing off the genius behind Aretha Franklin and her musical success. Here are your lottery numbers. Pick three, zero, six, eight, Fireball 1. Daily 4, 4509, Fireball 4. Cash 5, 3, 16, 19, 20, 32. And your Mega Millions, 10, 41, 46, 52, 69, Mega Ball 8, Mega Plier 2. Good luck. 456, the genius of Aretha Franklin being highlighted in a brand new documentary. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. I want to make hits. Mr. Wexler. We're about to learn a whole lot more about Aretha Franklin's genius. Genius. Aretha tells the story of the Queen of Soul that you might not know. Courtney B. Vance plays Franklin's father, preacher C.L. Franklin, and he tells me Aretha was who she was because she struggled. She it was it was it was ugly. It was it was it was messy. She was messy, and right. we we identified with the mess. Genius. Aretha premieres Sunday night on the National Geographic Channel, and the next day on Hulu.
The group behind the Golden Globes promising to diversify after publicists threatened to cut them off. Over 100 PR firms sent the Hollywood Foreign Press Association a letter saying no interviews with big name clients unless there was transformational change in the HFPA, which has no black members. The HFPA now saying it'll add 13 black members this year, giving it 100 Golden Globes voters in total. Daniel Kaluuya and Kerry Mulligan following up their Oscar nominations by hosting Saturday Night Live. The Judas and the Black Messiah star will make his hosting debut April 3rd. The Promising Young Woman star making her hosting debut the following week. And happy birthday to John Boyega. The Star Wars and Small Axe star is 29 today while Smashing Pumpkins frontman Billy Corgan is 54. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Nathanson, ABC News, Los Angeles. And time now is 4.57 and 70 degrees for now. Still ahead on GMSA, President Biden trying to send a message to migrants coming across the southern border. We have more on his attempts to ease tensions with his border policies. Plus, Instagram is trying to make its services safer for teens to use. We'll tell you the steps the company is making coming up in Tech Bytes. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Coming up, the crisis at the U.S. southern border. Why President Biden is telling migrants not to come. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest. Just now waking up, we've got drizzle pretty much area wide and a line of showers and thunderstorms headed towards San Antonio. Mike will have an update coming up. Good morning, everybody. It's Wednesday. It's March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for joining us today. Let's go straight to Mike with the latest on these storms that are headed our way. Yeah, we uh, if you're getting ready to leave within the next hour, uh, leave sooner than later or else uh, wait a little bit because we do have that line that's going to be moving through. It's moving through the hill country as of right now. Now ahead of this front, temperatures are very warm. The humidity is very high. We are at 70 degrees right now. And as you can see, that bottom number at 68, which when you have dew points that high, that is almost like a, a wet towel when you walk outside. Notice how temperatures, though, are going to be dropping down. As a matter of fact, uh, I think we get even a little bit cooler than that right around 9 o'clock, getting down to 60 as this front moves through. Then we start to rebound, make it up into the upper 70s later on today. And very, very windy conditions and very dry today. And that in itself is uh, causing a problem or a potential threat later on today. The aquifer yesterday dropped down three tenths of a foot. And the allergens, I mean, there is just a whole laundry list of them out there, but most every Everything except for Hackberry is on the, the lower side. All right, here's what it looks like on radar as of right now. And as you can see, that line, which most of the, the heavier weather is well up into portions of the, uh, the hill country and a couple of uh, thunderstorms out there as well. And as far as the timing of this, again, it's moving down to the southeast about 40 miles per hour. So right around Bernie, this is going to be getting you within the next uh, couple of minutes, basically. And then it will continue to work its way down to the uh, the south and east and should be just on the, the heels of San Antonio within about the next uh, say half an hour. So that will continue to work its way again down to the southeast roughly at uh, 40 miles per hour. So temperatures notice the big difference. We're still at 66 Bernie stage comfort 69 and then all of a sudden it drops down in Kerrville at 55 degrees with the front moving on through there and the wind out of uh, the northwest. It has started to shift around and uh, just a couple of minutes ago winds were gusting 40 miles per hour in Kerrville. So that's what we can expect. That's why there's red flag warnings with a much, much drier air covering the uh Western two thirds of our viewing area later on today and also wind advisories are posted again. All of the allergens are on the uh, the low side and temperatures right now 68 degrees. We drop down then make it back up to 78 later on today. Good stretch of weather in store the next couple of days. Details on that coming up. Traffic Authority Samuel King. All right, we got water out there in the roads. They're wet. What's going on as some slick roads and we still have this major crash Mike near the crossroads area 410 uh, at Fredericksburg Road to be uh, exact uh, things looking a little better there more traffic getting few fewer emergency vehicles but there's still a situation there at that that exit ramp there some lanes were blocked and we understand there's some guardrail damage uh, from uh, this crash uh, overnight uh, so let's take a look at the uh, maps here and take you a closer look at where this is again this is a 410 at uh, Fredericksburg very close to uh, the crossroads area kind of see there still remains a bit of a delay on Fredericksburg Road
uh, 410 a little bit, there's I-10 there. So again, something to navigate for, just something uh, on the list too, and that those major showers moving in. So maybe uh, this could be cleared out before we get that real line of storms that Mike was just talking about. Uh, elsewhere in the region, not much uh, going on. Uh, this is pretty much the only major incident uh, right now. Uh, taking a look at uh, the travel time on a 410, seven minutes uh, each direction there. So uh, not really too bad yet because you don't have as much traffic on the roads at the moment, 24 minutes and I-10 coming from Bernie into downtown San Antonio. That could change as the rain comes in. Uh, 31 minutes coming in from Seguin, 17 minutes on 35 from Lytle. Again, here is a look at the crash scene. 410 at Crossroads. Avoid the area if you can, at least for the next hour or so. Mark, Stephanie. Thank you, Samuel. Update on late breaking news. This morning, police are still searching for a suspect who fatally shot a man at a hotel on the city's northwest side. This happening in the 4900 block of Northwest Loop 410 at the Home Suites. Our Sarah Costa is live on the scene with what we know about the incident. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning, Mark and Stephanie. Well, right behind me, what we're seeing is San Antonio police crime scene investigators. They're inside that room, searching it for any clues for what may have led up to this fatal shooting. What we know at this point is that police were called out around three o'clock this morning to the home suites here off of Loop Northwest 410. They say two men and a Two men and a woman were inside that hotel room. Police believe the men knew each other and that they got into an argument. Police say the suspect then pulled out a gun and shot the victim four times. Police say the victim, a man in his 30s, dying from gunshot wounds to the stomach and the head. The suspect at this point, they don't have a description of him. They said that he ran off and jumped the fence. They continue to look for that suspect this morning. At this point, police are interviewing several witnesses, that woman that was in the hotel room with them, and also nearby witnesses that say they saw that suspect ran off. And crime scene investigators will be here for at least another hour before they clear the scene. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you very much, Sarah. The situation at the U.S. southern border worsening by the day. The Homeland Security Chief acknowledging they are bracing for even more migrants as thousands of unaccompanied children overrun border facilities meant for adults. Now, in an exclusive interview with ABC News, President Joe Biden with a message for migrants telling them to, quote, not to come, end quote, while the administration grapples with the alarming scene. ABC's Andrew Dimbert is in Washington with the latest. A humanitarian crisis brewing at the border. The U.S. immigration system strained as a surge of migrant arrivals desperately tried to reach U.S. soil. More than 4,200 are children housed in government-run detention facilities. Now, questions are mounting for a White House still not allowing journalists inside. But two lawyers who were let in paint the troubling picture of the inhumane conditions for the unaccompanied children, some forced to sleep on floors. Around 40 to 50 kids without their parents sharing spaces like like these. That is where they would spend their entire day. The facilities, many designed to hold single adult men for just 24 hours, have been home for some children for up to two months. This crying mother describes the disturbing conditions her two sons from Honduras endured before being reunited, saying it was agony what they went through. The number of children making the journey without their parents jumping 25% since last week. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, President Joe Biden says his message to migrants is... Don't come. We're in the process of getting set up. Don't leave your town or city or community. When asked if it was a mistake not to anticipate this surge, Biden saying this also happened during the Trump presidency. Well, first of all, there was a surge the last two years in, in, in 19 and 20. This one might be worse. No, well, it could be, but here's the deal. We're sending back people. To the administration now turning a convention center in Dallas, Texas, to hold 3,000 teenage boys for up to 90 days as the struggles to find safe spaces looms large. And now the Biden administration says it's bringing in FEMA to help open new temporary facilities. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington.
An update to the vaccine rollout in Bear County. 206,778 people have been fully vaccinated according to the state. Nearly 370,000 have received the first dose so far. Local leaders continue to say Bear County needs to receive more doses of vaccines. An assistant director at Metro Health says Bear County is getting about 6.6% of the state's vaccine allocations this week. At the current rate, she estimated it would take more than 20 weeks to vaccinate the people who are now eligible in phases 1A, 1B, and 1C. So that would be early August. But she also clarified later to KSET that her estimate does not take into account vaccine doses allocated to pharmacies through a separate federal program. 509 and we are still at 70 degrees. And still ahead, a look at what Instagram is doing to make their app safer for teens. And up next, latest on shootings at two massage parlors, or at least two massage parlors in Atlanta, and one in the city suburbs that left at least eight people dead. And taking a look outside with live cam, a little messy out there. It's 70 degrees, and we're expecting even more rain about 6 a.m., so be careful out there. We'll be right back. Now 512 this morning, police are still trying to determine why a man opened fire at several spas in the Atlanta metro area, killing eight people. This comes just as Congress prepares to hold a hearing tomorrow on the disturbing increase in violent attacks from California to New York, targeting people of Asian descent. ABC's Kenneth Moten has the latest. This morning, the FBI is now investigating a shooting spree that left eight people dead at multiple massage parlors in the Atlanta area. Police first identify 21-year-old Robert Long as the suspect in a shooting that killed four people at a spa in Cherokee County, Georgia. About one hour later, investigators say a gunman matching Long's description walked into two other massage parlors in Atlanta, killing four more people. It, it appears that all victims are female. Okay. And race? It appears that they may be Asian. Atlanta police then dispatching officers to check nearby similar businesses. This uh, started up in Cherokee County. My understanding, they shot up a spot there. They've shot up two spots here in zone two. So we need to make sure if we have any Asian spots, we need to be checking on them. Police capture Long after a brief pursuit. This morning, investigators say it's extremely likely he's connected to all three shootings. Six of the eight victims are of Asian descent. Authorities are now trying to determine a motive and whether race played a role. Racially motivated attacks targeting Asian Americans have been on the rise nationwide. Overnight, the New York City Police Department's counterterrorism unit said it's deploying assets to our great Asian communities across the city out of an abundance of caution. Police in Oakland, California, the scene of several recent attacks on Asians say they're also monitoring the Georgia shootings. An Asian American advocacy group saying this latest attack will only exacerbate the fear and pain that the Asian American community continues to endure. Police did not release the victim's name, and even though they haven't released a motive, the number one trend on Twitter overnight was hashtag stop Asian hate. Kenneth Moten, ABC News, New York. Time now is 514 and 70 degrees for now. Up next, a first look at Google's new version of the Nest Hub smart display that can track your sleep without a wearable device. Plus, one of the most iconic golfers in the world returning to video games. How would I describe overpaying on a used car? It's humiliating. And it's expensive. I just trusted the wrong used car sites. <sighs> Remember, if you don't see me, you're not seeing the most accurate price. Shop at Carfax. You won't have to overpay on a used car again. But uh, I guess life goes on. So, all right, come on, boy. Here we go. Let's go, buddy. Shop millions of great deals, all with a free Carfax report. Only at the all-new Carfax.com. Ah, a package. You know what this human ordered? A backache. Consider pain delivered. Pain says you can't. Advil says you can. Thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. Your heart is true. You're a pal in a car with done. 518 Instagram introducing new policies that will make the site safer for teens. ABC's Motokasar Abdi has details in this morning's Tech Bites.
In today's Tech Bites, Instagram sets up new safety protocols for young people. The app will no longer allow adults to send direct messages to minors who don't follow them. In the meantime, teens will receive a warning if they connect with adults deemed suspicious. The latest version of Google's Nest Hub can tell you how well you slept last night. The smart screen will monitor your sleeping pattern and quality of sleep from your bedside. The device is equipped with a new chip that uses radar to detect motion, including breathing and snoring. Finally, Tiger Woods is getting back into video games. A slick trailer helped announce his new partnership with the company behind PGA Tour 2K Series. Woods will help design upcoming editions of the game. It's unclear, though, if his likeness will be included. But what's a video game including Tiger Woods without putting Tiger Woods in there? Those are your Tech Bites. Have a great day. And I read this morning, Tiger is back home in Florida recuperating and starting rehab after his car accident in California. Yeah, good news there. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. There were problems on 410 and Fredericksburg Road earlier today. Yeah, Stephanie, Mark, we're still seeing the, the emergency vehicles out there, but we're seeing fewer and fewer number as uh, time uh, goes on this morning. So that's a good thing, but you can see some traffic getting through, but there are some lanes still blocked. Uh, let's take a look at the maps here uh, in that area. This is again 410 at Fredericksburg Road close to the crossroads area. You see that delay has pretty much uh, evaporated there. So uh, that's uh, hopefully soon this will uh, be cleared off the board, especially with that uh, rain moving in as Mike is uh, talking about. Looking at other parts uh, of the area, Bandera Road between uh, 410 and 1604, 11 to 12 minutes. So uh, that's looking uh, fine this morning. No real other incidents on the map. We do have something looking over here, 281 at 410. There is a stalled vehicle there, but that's really it. Again, this is a the crossroads area. See even more uh, cars getting uh, through there, a bit of emergency vehicles. So again, the crossroads area somewhere to avoid at least uh, for uh, the next uh, maybe 45 minutes to an hour or so as they work to get that overnight crash cleared. And guys, back to you. Thank you, Samuel. Mike, as those uh, storms get closer, it looks like that whole line is starting to change a bit. Yeah, it's kind of breaking up ever so slightly, it looks like, just by watching the uh, the radar loop. And as you can see right there, how it was more of a solid line. There are still a couple of thunderstorms up there right around uh, Fredericksburg. But also what we're going to have to watch out for, too, is not anything severe, but just the fact that it's going to be blustery with this rain. Rain's going to come down fairly good, so it's going to be, you know, at times almost where it's like the rain's going sideways. So that's why, and especially as the commute is going on, and as you can see, this is continuing to work its way down here. It almost looks like there might be a bit of a wind shift right there out ahead of it. And then uh, some of those uh, rain showers, a couple of thunderstorms moving on in here. So that's what uh, can be expected. Again, if you are leaving perhaps in about the next uh, 10, 15 minutes or so as this continues to work its way down in here. But yeah, it does look like it is sort of breaking up ever so slightly. Uh, there's a weather services issued a significant weather advisory, which just means get ready for some of these showers and thunderstorms around here, but uh, not expecting anything severe here in town, but fairly decent winds and a pretty good light show as well. Now, a lot of that's going to move through. So right now we are at uh, what? 20 after 5 and this computer model has it almost completely out of town within the next hour. So it will move through fairly quickly. It's going to the southeast at about uh, 40 miles per hour as of right now and will actually start to clear out somewhat by mid morning and then plenty of sunshine throughout the rest of the day. There is still According to a storm prediction center, the marginal risk, very small risk that one or two of those could become uh, strong to severe in some of our eastern counties. And this would be later on today as that line or later on this morning as that line moves on through here with that high wind because winds are going to be got to get up to 60 mile per hour winds, but uh, they're going to be just on the verge of that. Now on the backside with the windy conditions all day long and the very, very dry air coming on in here, that is prompting the red flag warning to go into effect uh, later on this morning up until just after dinner time, right before sunset. Same thing with the wind advisory, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. for the Hill Country and our counties out to the west. And uh, wind right now being reported just uh, three miles per hour. So the, as you can see, the wind shift has taken place there in Bernie. We're looking at that line, that initial line on the, the radar loop. So it's uh, shifted around in Bernie. Kerrville, 9 miles per hour, Lost Maples, 10. And then wind gusts at Bernie right now up to 28 miles per hour. So again, that rain is going to be kind of going sideways. So just allow yourself some extra time on your commute this morning. Here's going back 12 hours on the loop, and you can see those storms that were developing out there to the northwest right on time. A lot of computer models handled this quite well, so that will continue to work its way on out here. If you are doing any traveling off to the east later on today, this is and 
I don't mean to overstate things, but kind of an explosive situation that's going to be going on there in the uh, the deep south, Memphis, mid south, and uh, down at the. Uh, further south from there later on this afternoon with a, uh, a moderate risk for severe weather, which means a very good shot at severe weather that's well off to the east of us. All right, 73 degrees today at noon, sunny skies, very windy, however, all day long. Winds are going to be uh, 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting 35 and even close to 40 miles per hour at times, 78 for a high temperature today. And then we're going to have plenty of sunshine the next couple of days. Left that little thunderstorm in there overnight. Beg your pardon. And uh, 72 tomorrow. Still on the breezy side and cooler temperatures as well. Lows in the uh, the 40s around here. Low 40s. It'll be nice though. Yeah, but rest of the morning commute is going to be wet. All right, we'll be careful. Thank you, Mike. Time now is 524 and about 70 degrees right now. Still ahead in your morning spotlight, a first look at Lynn Manuel Miranda's new book. Plus, Spike Lee is returning to Cannes. Turning to entertainment news, fans of the man behind Hamilton are getting a double dose of his creativity. CNN's David Daniel has that and more in today's Hollywood Minute. Look who's home! Bad changes happening on the block since you've been at school. When it came to dreams, we had to keep scraping by. Ice cold piragua. In the Heights finally reaches fans this summer, and not just the movie. Lin-Manuel Miranda, who created the Tony-winning stage musical on which the movie is based, is co-authoring a book. In the Heights, Finding Home chronicles his 20 years with the project, from his first ideas to the 2008 stage show and the movie. The book arrives June 22nd, just four days after the film's debut. Thank you, thank you. Spike Lee is getting a second chance to be the first black president of the Cannes Film Festival jury. Lee was set to preside last year, but the festival was canceled due to the pandemic. This year's festival is on, though it was pushed back from its usual May dates to July. We help the wealthiest families in the U.S. get their kids into school. So I've done 761, what I would call side doors. Operation Varsity Blues, the college admissions scandal, is part drama, part documentary. Matthew Modine plays Rick Singer, who helped wealthy parents buy and lie their kids' ways into college. The acting is mixed with interviews and real students reacting to their college admission notifications. Operation Varsity Blues debuts today on Netflix. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. I assume Lori Loughlin will not be streaming that one. I don't think so. 528, about 69 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at Dallas Convention Center, will open up today to shelter migrant teenage boys, while federal officials say more border arrivals are on the way. We're going to have what President Biden is saying about that issue. Plus why local health of professions uh, are professionals are urging everyone to get back on track when it comes to important health screenings they may have missed because of the pandemic. Good morning. It is Wednesday, March 17th. Happy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, happy St. Patrick's Day. We're starting out with some green on radar this morning in the form of showers and there are a few storms, and then Mike says it's going to get really windy around here. Yeah, it's already started to uh, get windy just ahead out I-10 as you get toward Bernie, and the, the changes have started to take place. So you'll definitely know when this front moves on through here, not only with the uh, temperatures, but also with the wind. And out there at the airport still looks fairly tranquil, but again, you just go a little bit further up to the northwest, you're going to hit it. So we're still at 70 degrees. We will be dropping down at least about 10 degrees over the course of the next couple of hours as this front moves moves on through. As you can see, wind is still out of the south primarily, very light, a lot of humidity. That's also going to be dropping. So here is the, uh, the line of showers and thunderstorms. And notice as this loops back even a couple of hours, it was a fairly pronounced line, a lot more in the way of some thunderstorms. There's more up there north of Austin, but this has been sort of breaking up. And as you can see right along that line right there, that's the, the wind shift, which has gone through uh, Bernie stage area right now, and it's just sort of broken up. Uh, yeah, there will be or maybe a couple of thunderstorms around here, but uh, most of the heavy stuff is going to be staying up there to the north. Again, look at temperatures have dropped down 10 degrees. Bernie stage is down to 54 in Kerrville, and then you've got 70s and humidity out ahead of that, and wind has shifted around as well. 15 mile per hour winds, but then it is gusting up to 28. We're going to be seeing some pretty good wind gusts, not only this morning, but 
also throughout the rest of today and very, very dry air is coming on in here. So these uh, dew point temperatures, which is it's kind of wet towel humidity right now, it's going to be dropping down. And so that's what's prompting red flag warnings for the uh, western about two thirds of our viewing area it does include San Antonio and down to the southeast toward Corpus Christi and then all the way out to the west and also wind advisories on top of that. Of course, haven't had much of any rain. This rain has been nice, but not enough to alleviate that red flag warning. Uh, Hackberry is moderate. Everything else is low and there is just a whole list of uh, allergens out there and shower storms stronger up to the north and maybe even off to the east uh, later on this morning, kind of moving on uh, out of our area. Sunny, windy, upper 70s today and then overnight it's going to be cooler and cooler the next couple of days. We'll stay in the uh, low 70s, even upper 60s and lows in the low 40s. So uh, some jacket weather in the next few mornings around here and then the rest of the week again sunny and staying coolish. Good looking weekend in store. More details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King. All right, we got the wet roads. Never a good sign for a morning commute. Uh, Mike, but uh, we do have some uh, good news here at the crossroads area. It appears uh, that that crash we had uh, overnight that was a pretty serious one caused some guardrail damage, among other things, uh, looks to be clear. We're not seeing those emergency vehicles uh, in this view from the crossroads. Uh, let's take a look at, at the map so we can get a closer look at the delay if there is any. And it does seem that that situation has uh, improved here. There's a little bit of a delay there on Fredericksburg Road, uh, but otherwise uh, things getting a lot better there with that crash that we had overnight again at uh, Loop 410 eastbound at Fredericksburg Road. Uh, that's really the only thing, a big thing on the map right now. Uh, we did have a stalled vehicle here uh, near uh, 281 and 410 at near the airport, and that vehicle is still there, so watch out for that if you are traveling. Uh, out to the uh, north and west, Mike was mentioning the rain. We had some heavy rain earlier around Kerrville. And now Bernie, some wet roads there. So especially if you're coming in on I-10, uh, 24 minutes still from uh, I-10 from Bernie into uh, San Antonio. So that's good. 26 minutes on 35 from New Braunfels, 29 minutes uh, from Seguin. Uh, we'll continue to keep an eye on that. Again, the crossroads area looking a lot better than it did uh, just about half an hour ago. Uh, Mark, Stephanie, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. San Antonio police are investigating what they're calling a suspicious death a man found in the middle of a busy intersection on this happened overnight at South Hackberry and Martin Luther King Drive. Our Katrina Weber is there with a live report. Now, Katrina, we understand a police officer made the discovery. Well, that's right. Good morning, Stephanie. A police officer on regular patrol is the one who stumbled upon the body at this intersection around 2.30 this morning. They tell us that it appears to be the body of a man who's in his 30s and he has some serious head trauma. Now, things are clear here now, but police did have the street shut down earlier this morning as they investigated. We could show you the video from that time. Uh, they were calling this a suspicious homicide. They did have homicide investigators come out here. Uh, we believe also that they had traffic investigators as well. They weren't able to tell us what happened to the man, whether he was shot, uh, perhaps stabbed, or the victim of a hit and run. They simply did not know at that point, and they were going to count on the medical examiner to tell them more. But again, they said that man who appeared to be in his 30s did have some serious head trauma, and uh, he was dead when police found him here earlier this morning. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Stay home. That's the message President Biden has for people thinking about crossing into the United States at the southern border. That's as his administration scrambles to respond to a surge of unaccompanied migrant children already here. And as seen as Brent Conway reports, officials say more people are on the way. Tens of thousands of people making the dangerous journey to the U.S.-Mexico border. President Joe Biden is asking them not to. I can say quite clearly, don't come. And what we're in the process of getting set up, don't leave your town or city or community. Still, federal officials expect them to keep coming. Most families and adults are being sent back, but all too often, children are crossing by themselves. Thousands are already here, and there's massive overcrowding. A lawyer representing unaccompanied minors says things need to change. It is an untenable situation that the administration needs to address immediately. The administration says it's a work in progress. We are building the capacity to address the needs of those children when they arrive. And that includes using a Dallas Convention Center to shelter migrant teenage boys starting today. 
the crisis these children are facing, these families, <laughs> has become political. It's a pent-up surge that had started under uh, Donald Trump. And it's entirely caused by the actions of this administration. This administration admits there is the perception enforcement is now more relaxed, but they say that there are other elements fueling migrants outside of who's sitting in the White House, like devastation in Central America from two hurricanes last year, the toll of the pandemic, and worsening conditions these people are trying to escape. I'm Britt Conway reporting. The Federal Aviation Administration is cracking down on unruly passenger on U.S. flights. The FAA says there have been more than 500 reports of misbehaving passengers just since December. The FAA says in turn it's now extending strict enforcement against those who disobey COVID-related mask policies. It's also encouraging agency officials to consider both civil and criminal charges, including fines and jail time. More people are traveling by air, especially in the last few days. TSA said it screened more than 1,300,000 passengers, the highest single day number since March 15th of last year. And most of the time, the idea is to stay out of prison. But if it's the prison Alcatraz and it's open for tours, that's a different story. The shuttered federal penitentiary and popular tourist destination in San Francisco Bay has been closed due to the pandemic. But now the foreboding historic island prison is now reopening for indoor tours after being closed for more than a year. The typical COVID precautions are required, of course. Also, Alcatraz will host far fewer guests than normal and ferries to the island will run at reduced capacity. Alcatraz did open last August for outdoor only options, but officials closed it again in December. 539, we are now at looks like 65 degrees. And still ahead, Walmart's teaming up with a Texas-based fashion designer who is known for dressing many high-profile pro celebrities. Outside with live cam, waiting on a few showers and storms. And Mike says, yeah, they may already be here. We'll get an update coming up. We'll take another look at that radar. 542, many of us have all sorts of uh, put off all sorts of medical screenings during the pandemic. And while all of them are important, one in particular requires you be careful in your choices or it could add some pain in the pocketbook. It's colon cancer screening and Ursula Perry talks to a local doctor who says some tests are more simple to use than others, but there could be a big difference medically as well as financially. It is Colon Cancer Awareness Month, so you may be getting lots of information on getting up to date on your screening. Today, you have choices, the in-clinic colonoscopy or Cologuard, an in-home screening test that checks for DNA and blood abnormalities. That test is about 70-ish percent good at finding cancer, but it's only about 20-ish percent good at finding the big polyps, which are the ones with usually pre-cancer in it. And those are the ones you really want to get out. Colonoscopy, on the other hand, is 95% accurate at finding large polyps. And there's one more thing. If your Cologuard test is positive, your insurance company may not cover the subsequent colonoscopy you now need. They're just saying you have one screening. You got one mammography, one pap smear, one colon screening. So if you use it, tough luck, now you need to pay. Some other big differences? Cologuard is for those who are at average risk for colorectal cancer and do not have issues like IBD or a family history of colorectal cancer. You know, the best thing to do is colonoscopy. There's no doubt nobody puts that in question. When it's done right, you are very protected, about as good as you can be protected against any cancer. The Cologuard system is much less expensive, but you need to be prepared to pay out of pocket if more screenings are going to be required and your insurance won't cover them. So ask in advance. As for colonoscopy, the good news is that while the procedure is underway, your doctor can remove small polyps right there and then. For Good Morning San Antonio, I'm Ursula Perry. And time now is 544 and about 69 degrees right now. Up next, why strawberries have once again topped an environmental group's list of the dirty dozen fruits and vegetables. In your morning consumer headlines, Walmart is teaming up with American fashion designer Brandon Maxwell. He's known for dressing Michelle Obama, Lady Gaga, Meghan Markle, and others. Now, the Texas native says he's been going to Walmart since he was a kid. Now, Maxwell has become the creative director for Walmart's exclusive fashion brands, Free Assembly and Scoop. Maxwell will oversee four seasonal collections annually. For the first under his influence is a holiday collection arriving in stores this fall. His full collections for men, women, and children 
children will debut at Walmart next spring. Well, Dick Sporting Goods knows that Lululemon's men's pants are a hit, so it's creating its own version. The Sporting Goods chain has now launched a new men's private label athleisure brand. The line, which features pants, shorts, tees, and sweatshirts, is positioned to appeal to, quote, the modern active man who lives life on the go. Dick's currently sells merchandise from Nike, Under Armour, and other athletic brands and stores, but nothing from Lululemon. The company's trying to capitalize on the popularity of popularity rather of athleisure clothing with shoppers. Strawberries continue to lead the dirty dozen list of fruits and veggies that contain the highest levels of pesticides. That's according to the Environmental Working Group's 2021 Shopper's Guide to Pesticides in Produce, Spinach, Nectarines, Apples, and Grapes also made the list. Avoiding pesticides is especially critical for babies and children, experts say because of the damage they can cause to the developing brain. Let's go straight to uh, tra Traffic Lab and Samuel King. Right, guys, thanks uh, very much. Uh, we still have uh, the clear uh, situation here at the crossroads area. So I wanted to show you 410 at Marbach and you can see uh, there are some uh, raindrops uh, on the camera there as that rain uh, is moving in. So that's something else to uh, watch out for today. Uh, let's take a look at, at the maps uh, if we could here. And this is uh, looking at some of the rain to the north and west of uh, San Antonio uh, there. And that's kind of moving into the, the area now. So areas like uh, Bernie and stuff are, have seen uh, some wet roads. So we know the rain has kind of moved out of some of these areas. So this might be lagging a little bit, but that's just an indication of what's coming here in the San Antonio area. And now looking again at uh, 410 here to travel time, looking fairly good. Nine minutes each direction, a little slower than normal when we have the light traffic here between 35 and I-10. And we still have a situation here. This is a 281 at a 410. Uh, that stalled vehicle is still there. This is the view uh, from Transguide. So watch out for that if you are traveling uh, near the airport this morning, guys. All right, things to watch out for. Thank you, Samuel. Hey, the front's moving through as we speak, and uh, more on that. Wind has really started to pick up, so if you're hitting the road, make sure two hands on the wheel. More on that in just a second. First of all, I want to tell you about some pets who need some homes over there at the uh, San Antonio Humane Society. Kylie, seven-year-old, seven-and-a-half-year-old pit bull mix. Look at those eyes. <laughs> just want some love. Ready to find a loving home in Cosmos, a sweet and playful seven-year-old girl. And before she arrived at the Humane Society, she was found hurt and had to have part of her tail amputated and she's gonna love to play with you all day long. Don't miss out on their extended. I like big mutts and I cannot lie adoption special through Sunday. All large dogs adoption fees have been waived. For more information, sahumane.org slash adopt. All right, take a look outside right now. And I'm surprised this camera is not shaking. Well, it is shaking just a little bit there and got some raindrops on the camera. 65 now. We were at 70 right about um, 10 minutes ago. 59 Bernie stage. So the cooler air is starting to work its way on in here. Wind is now up to 23 miles per hour out at the airport, and then it is gusting to 40. So that's what you got to watch out for, especially if you're driving a van truck or something like that this morning. Two hands on the wheel. So the rain is moving on. Th but look at how this thing is just basically falling apart almost. Still have a couple of thunderstorms northeast of Austin and up there uh, just on the far northeastern corner of Gillespie County. But yeah, it, it's kind of been a little bit of a. I don't know, a miss, if you will. We do have some showers that are moving through town right there, and so we'll be uh, seeing those. And also out there in Medina County, And but you can see as this, again, has moved on through or continued to work its way down to the southeast, it has pretty much fallen apart. And this line right there is basically the, uh, the wind shift line. So if you're southeast of town, your wind is going to be shifting around out of the uh, northwest, and it's going to be very blustery this morning and all day long. Computer model continues to take everything, get it on out of here very quickly. We'll be clearing out pretty well by later on this morning and then especially uh, throughout the rest of the afternoon. Still this very small chance marginal risk for some of those storms to be on the stronger side off to the east later on this morning. Now with the windy conditions and very dry air moving in here, we do have red flag warnings as well as wind advisories posted uh, from 10 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock this evening. Once again, as this loops back on through, you can see how that was a much more impressive line of storms. The majority of the uh, stronger storms were well up there to the north as expected. But yeah, this thing has just pretty much 
almost fallen apart. We do have those few showers moving on through. This whole storm system is going to continue to work its way off to the east. And again, got to emphasize it is going to be a nasty situation off to the east of us today. If you got any travel plans heading off to the east, definitely check ahead, especially later on today, because they're going to be looking at some extremely nasty thunderstorms out there in the uh, mid south and the deep south along the uh, southern Mississippi Valley. 73 degrees today at noon, plenty of sunshine. Temperatures will continue to drop down. We're at 65 right now. We're going to be getting down to about 60 in the next couple of hours or even into the upper 50s, obviously 50s in the hill country. And then later on this afternoon, we'll warm back up to the upper 70s. Sunny skies, still windy conditions. Clear skies overnight. It's going to be breezy again tomorrow. Cooler the next couple of mornings, downright chilly by a Saturday morning down to 43 degrees, 72 tomorrow, 69. That's it on Friday. And of course, spring officially begins early on Saturday morning. I think it's 437 in the morning. But uh, yeah, I think the big thing we have to watch out for now this morning is just the windy conditions. Keep your and all day long, obviously a little bit of rain, so take it easy. We sure will. Thank you, Mike. Mm -hmm. Right now it's 553, we're at about 69 degrees. Let's take a look at your winning lotto numbers. We have pick three, zero, six, eight, fireball one, daily four, four, five, zero, nine, fireball four. And your cash five numbers, three, 16, 19, 20, 32, and mega millions, 10, 41, 46, 52, 69, mega ball of eight, mega plier two. A reminder, the May municipal election is coming up soon for San Antonio. Do you have questions for any of the candidates competing for mayor and the 10 council races? You can submit your questions online right now at ksat.com. We have the article posted on our homepage, along with a lot more election information. Glad you're with us on this early Wednesday morning. Coming up on GMSA, while over 50% of Americans don't believe in bad luck superstitions, some credit their accomplishments to good fortune and good fortune to luck. Still ahead on GMSA, we'll show you how to make the most of your luck. And you might need a little bit on the roads this morning. We have rain in the area right now, but that front is really moving through. That means higher winds, and Mike says the temperature is dropping. It shows 69 in the screen, but he now says we are down to 60. A man was fatally shot at a Northwest Side hotel room early this morning. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What police are saying, what they know so far about the suspect. And taking a look outside with live cam, as you can see, it's a little messy out there. Of course, Mike has been busy all morning because we're expecting some rain and some wind. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It is Wednesday, March 17th. It is also St. Patrick's Day, so happy St. Patrick's Day. Thanks for joining us today. And more Mother Nature has been contributing as well. There's been green on radar this morning. When Mike said a line of showers and storms that worked its way through the today has already fallen apart a bit. The next thing you're talking about is big, big windy conditions. Well, it's already windy out there right now. Mm -hmm. If you step outside, the wind has uh, started to, to uh, shift around. And yeah, most of it uh, has kind of kind of fizzled on out. The timing of it was, was right on, but uh, even looking a couple of hours ago on radar, that line was very impressive. There were a lot more thunderstorms and the thing continued to fall apart. Obviously, we do have some rain out there as of right now, but the big story how the uh, temperatures have dropped down. We dropped down 10 degrees just in about the past half hour. It was going chunks of five degrees here and there. 59 burning stage, low 50s out in the hill country, but then you look at uh, Stinson still at 71, Randolph 63, so your temperature is about to drop down there at Stinson as well as Pleasanton, and the humidity has really dropped off as well. Well, these numbers, dew points were well up into about 20, almost 25 degrees higher, upper 60s just a few minutes ago. And the drier air is going to continue to move on in here. Wind out of the northwest at, uh, what, 20, 25 miles per hour here in town. And we've got those gusts. 40 at Stinson now, so the front's just moving through there. 33 out there at the airport, and it is going to stay breezy all day long. This is what radar is showing as of right now. And again, you go back a couple hours and look at how impressive that line was. 
and now it's pretty much falling apart. A good thunderstorm cell up there just to the north of Fredericksburg, and there is still the chance in our eastern counties some of those storms could be on the stronger side. Uh, over there, a little bit of rain in Medina County around Hondo, and you can see also the wind shift line, this green line right here, working its way on through, just going through uh, Seguin as of right now as well. So, yeah, we still do have a few showers uh, in and around town. Roads are definitely damp. It's been kind of a light light rain or heavy mist all morning long. So do take it easy when you hit the roads. Red flag warnings go into effect later on today for most all of the area, including San Antonio with the windy conditions and the very dry air. So extremely high fire danger and also wind advisories for the same period from 10 to 7 o'clock. Laundry list of allergens out there. Hackberries on the moderate side, low amounts of everything else. Temperatures this morning had to uh, obviously adjust things as quickly as the air has cooled off down to 57 within about the next hour. And we may actually even drop down a couple of more degrees than that here and there. Then we'll start the rebound once the sun comes up and we'll make it up into the uh, low to mid 70s today at noon. Top off in the upper 70s. And again, it's going to continue to be windy all day long. Northwesterly wind 15, 25 miles per hour gusting on top of that. Great looking stretch of weather for the next couple of days. And believe it or not, you're going to need a jacket the next few mornings. Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. All right, if you're getting ready to hit the roads, traffic authority, Samuel King, any problems? Uh, no real uh, problems at the moment, that, as far as we can tell, but uh, definitely depending on where you are in the region, as you can see on Transguide, there is uh, some uh, wet roads there. Downtown 37 at uh, Cesar Chavez. Uh, taking a look at the uh, road weather sort of indicator, this yellow, we don't see this often. That indicates the wind that Mike was talking about. So if you're heading in on 90 from Castroville, uh, that's something to uh, watch out for. 20 minutes now uh, coming into San Antonio from Castroville. 24 minutes on I-10 from Bernie. 26 minutes, New Braunfels, 30 one minute Seguin, so those traffic times looking well. Again, uh, 37 Fair Avenue, one of the areas receiving rain. Uh, take it easy on the roads. Guys, over to you. Thank you, Samuel. Hotel guests staying on the city's northwest side woke up to several gunshots early this morning. This after police say a man was shot and killed at the home suites in the 4900 block of Northwest Loop 410. Our Sarah Costa is live on the scene as crime investigators search for clues. Good morning, Sarah. Good morning. That scene wrapping up, but some crime scene investigators just searched that white vehicle behind me looking for any clues, narcotics that may give them some leads to what led up to this fatal shooting. Here's what we know at this time. Police were called out around three o'clock this morning to the northwest side off Loop 410, the home suites here. When police arrived, they found a man in his 30s dead. Police tell me that man was shot four times, two of those bullets striking the man in the head and stomach. Police say there were three people in that hotel room when the shooting shooting took place. A woman and two other men. The woman in the room told police the two men knew each other. An argument broke out. That's when the suspect pulled out the gun and shot the other men. Witnesses outside the hotel room told police the suspect ran off and jumped the fence. Now police continue to search for that suspect suspect this morning, and it looks like crime scene investigators are about to wrap up the scene as well. Live from the northwest side, I'm Sarah Costa, KSAT 12 News. Back to you guys, Mark and staff. San Antonio police say they found a man dead in the middle of a busy intersection. It happened overnight on South Hackberry at Martin Luther King. Katrina Weber is live over on our city's east side. Katrina, you say they're calling it a suspicious death. Well, that is how they labeled it uh, right out of the gate, although police are not exactly sure what happened to that man. But he was found here uh, at South Hackberry in Martin Luther King about 2.30 this morning. We have some video to show you. The scene is cleared now, but police did have the area shut down as they investigated. They say the man who they found appears to be in his 30s. He suffered severe head trauma, so that is why police are labeling this suspicious. But they weren't able to tell right away whether he may have been shot or uh, perhaps hit by a car and then left here by the driver. All of that is still under investigation, and they will be counting on an autopsy from the medical examiner to give them some answers. Now, this uh, man was found by a police officer who happened to be on regular patrol and stumbled upon the body here in the middle of this intersection. Again, the investigation is still underway. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. 
One man is in the hospital after police say he drove into a building overnight. It happened around 1 this morning at Farinon Drive at near I-10 and De Zavala. Officers say the man had a medical episode while driving. They say it caused him to black out, drive off the road, spin out, and crash into the building. Police say a passenger in the car was not hurt, but was the driver was taken to University Hospital. San Antonio police say a man was hit by a car overnight on the east side. It happened at Rigsby Avenue and Loop 410 around 11 last night. Police say the man was crossing the street, but not in the crosswalk when the driver hit him. The man was taken to Bansy and is expected to survive. Meanwhile, officers say the driver stopped to help and will not be facing charges at this time. To the pandemic now, local health officials report 192 new cases of COVID in Bear County. One more person has died from the virus as well. Mayor Ron Nirenberg says the seven day moving average is now at 174 cases per day. He also says hospitalizations continue to decrease. There are currently 206 patients getting medical attention for the coronavirus. San Antonio City Council members want a better way to sign up for vaccinations, but it's still not clear what form that will take in a committee committee meeting yesterday. The idea of a countywide wait list was brought up, but no solution was found and members will meet at a later time to discuss an option that is not confusing or chaotic. To read more about the proposed plans, you can find the story on our website at KSAT.com. Right now to 608, another top story we are following for you this morning. Eight people are dead and a suspect is in custody after a gunman opened fire at three different massage parlors in the Atlanta area. The shootings happened in the span of an hour last night. CNN's Holly Furfer has the latest from Atlanta. An investigation is underway in Metro Atlanta. Multiple people have been shot. Following shootings at three different massage parlors on Tuesday that left eight people dead. We just heard numerous gunshots coming from across the street. The first in Cherokee County at around 5 p.m. northwest of the city. We're looking at three uh, homicides and two people are injured. Then an hour later, authorities 30 miles away in northeast Atlanta responded to a call of a possible robbery. As we responded to the call, we were able to come upon the scene where individuals were shot inside the location while at that at that location we received another call across the street at shots fired responded to that to find another individual shot at that location one suspect 21 year old robert aaron long was taken into custody in connection with the shootings after a dramatic car chase georgia state patrol troopers performed the pit maneuver which caused the vehicle to spin out of control Police believe Long was likely responsible for all three shootings, but they have not yet specified a motive. I don't know how you would go in there. Or what kind of motive would drive you to do such a thing? In Atlanta, I'm Holly Furfer reporting. And time now is 609 and 60 degrees for now, even though your screen says 67. Spurs will look to make it two wins in a row tonight. Find out what to expect in tonight's game with the Bulls in Chicago. And another incident involving big cats in South Bear County has officials asking where they are coming from. We're going to get the latest on the exotic animal bust after the break. Outside with live cam, the weather is changing as we speak. It's about to get gusty around here. We're going to update on your forecast and we'll check the roads with Samuel King. Just about 614, the San Antonio Zoo is taking care of a bobcat and tiger after they were removed from a home in Southeast Bear County yesterday. It is another instance of big cats in Bear County causing county leaders to ask questions. Now, the Bear County Sheriff's Office, Animal Care Services, and U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service are all working together to find out where all the wild cats are coming from. This is the third case in about a month. Tim Morrow with the San Antonio Zoo says he is concerned for the well-being of these exotic animals. Neither one are in good shape when they were not getting the proper care um, for an animal of that complexity. They are not house cats. Morrow says the animals will be kept at the zoo until they find a sanctuary to permanently house them. Meanwhile, one lawmaker proposed a bill in the legislature that would make it a crime to keep certain exotic animals as pets. And it's been a busy morning on the roadway so far. Could get a little busier. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Yes, Mark, it's definitely we had that crash in the crossroads area overnight uh, that has cleared, uh, but uh, things are looking calm at the moment, uh, relatively speaking. Uh, let's take a look at the maps. We're going to take you first up to the uh, north 
west side here. This is uh, San Antonio. So looking at uh, 410 in the Crossroads area, some wet roads, uh, Bandera Road 281, also pretty slick as well. I take you up here to uh, New Braunfels area too, getting a little better here, but you can see 35, 46, also seeing some wet driving conditions. So make sure to uh, take time when you uh, head out on the roads today. Uh, taking a look at a 1604 on the uh, northwest side, 11 minutes between 281 and Bandera Road. So that is a fairly good uh, traffic time uh, considering the, the wet conditions that we have on some of the area roadways. And let's take a look at the uh, trans guide right now. This is 281 at Hildebrand. Uh, traffic flowing well, but you can see sort of the wet roads there, pretty slick. Uh, so don't Imagine, especially those curbs in 281, don't want to take those too uh, quickly this morning. That could end up in a bad situation, guys. All right, Definitely. thank you. And I think Mike would agree. Bus drivers will be fighting the wind today. Yes, yes. nice big vehicle like that, broad vehicle, uh, vans, semis, anything like that this morning. Even your, your car, I mean, because winds have been gusting close to 40 miles per hour in just about the past half hour. This morning, we'll probably drop down even a couple more degrees in the next few hours. A couple of leftover showers around here windy and uh, obviously cooler temperatures. We started off at 70 this morning and then temperatures have been dropping initially right when the front moves through a good 5 10 degrees in a, the course of uh, say 15 20 minutes if that and also the windy conditions. Then we're going to warm up nicely today with this very dry air up to uh, 78 but it's still going to be pretty breezy all day long. So here's another look uh, at sandwich on us on the uh, uh, right there on 281 wet roads 410 over there by the airport and it's not coming down you know in gangbusters at all a couple of couple of raindrops on the lens that's about it low 50s now in the hill country 61 port of say stinson just what a matter of minutes ago was still at 70 degrees but the front has moved on through here 72 in pleasanton don't get used to it. That's going to be changing as well. The humidity has dropped down significantly. These numbers have gone down about 25 degrees. We were in the upper 60s for dew points just a couple of basically a couple of minutes ago, half an hour ago or so, and the wind has picked up 12 miles per hour out there at the airport gusting. Uh, no gusts are being reported as of right now, but like I said, initially as the front moved through, we were gusting about 40 miles per hour, uh, 25 Castroville, 26 mile per hour wind gust in Hondo and 30 up the road in New Braunfels. So that's going to continue to be the case throughout the day. Here's the line of rain and again it moved on through. We still have a few showers left over around here, even a couple of stragglers on the back side of it up there around uh, Bandera. And there's the line, the wind shift line. So Floresville, get ready, Pleasanton, uh, Seguin, it looks like it's already moved through your area. Nixon, Gonzalez as that uh, the wind shift moves on through with some of these showers. But again, we're not even seeing any uh, lightning strikes being detected in and around town. Most everything is well up to the north. We still have some uh, pretty good thunderstorms up to the north, even some reports of hail, but that's well north of our area up uh, Austin and even north uh, e north and east of there. We're going to continue to have everything work its way out of here very quickly and skies will begin to clear out later on this morning and plenty of sunshine by noon and throughout the rest of the day. Still the chance for something potentially strong or severe off to the east, just that marginal risk well off uh, to the east of us, but we do have a very high risk for fire danger. Red flag warnings going to affect at 10 o'clock this morning for the western two thirds of our area with the windy and very dry conditions and also wind advisories are going to be in effect throughout the day today. Won't be as windy tomorrow, but it is going to be breezy now. Very dry air. Cool mornings warms up nicely, but we'll even still have kind of coolish afternoons compared to normal and the humidity is going to be staying on the low side throughout the rest of the week. It's going to try to come back in here. Looks like we get another bit of a front coming through uh, the first part of next week. Interesting, just a couple of days ago, hardly seeing anything freezing on the map. And now it's down to 29 in Denver, 15 at Casper and off to the east of us. This is the air that we were in yesterday and even earlier this morning. Very warm, very humid, and it is a very, very volatile situation off to the east of us around uh, Memphis, Mid-South area and then south of there where they are definitely expecting some severe weather later on today. 73 degrees at noon. Sunny skies still going to be on the windy side pretty much all day long and then 78 for high temperature today. Tomorrow morning we get down into the upper 40s here in town. Might want to grab a jacket. Mid 40s Friday morning, low 40s Saturday morning. Beautiful, sunny, breezy conditions. Windy today, breezy tomorrow. Beautiful all the way through and to ring in spring on Saturday. Sunday, a couple of more clouds, maybe a shower by Tuesday.
Uh, even though you've been talking about it all morning, I think this is the kind of wind that's going to catch a lot of people off guard today. Yeah, especially initially as the front moves through. At least mm -hmm. it's settled just a, just a little bit, but it's going to be breezy all day, so hang on to your hat. All right. Thank you, Mike. We will. Just about 620, and we're looking at it uh, 60 degrees. 60 degrees for now, and the Spurs are back on the court tonight looking to pick up another win. We're going to have a preview of tonight's matchup against the Bulls. Here is your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a medium coffee. Win with Circle K and GMSA. For pain relief, don't just block the pain with ordinary patches and creams. Help heal the pain with Thermacare. Real therapeutic heat increases blood flow to help accelerate healing. So you not only feel better, you get better. Thermacare. Real heat. Real healing. At Philadelphia, we know what makes the perfect schmear of cream cheese. You need only the freshest milk and cream. That one. And the world's best, and possibly only, Schmelier. Philadelphia. Schmear perfection. I live the lie, love is the crime, it's you I believe in. No need to blame myself, no need to die, I'm only human. Don't hesitate. Time heals the pain. You ain't the problem. Age before beauty? Why not both? Visibly diminished wrinkled skin in just two days. New Crepe Corrector Lotion, only from Gold Bond. Championing your skin. In this morning's GMA First Look, the mother-daughter duo accused of stealing the homecoming crown. The system is set up for the persons who have access uh, not to allow persons to have that. There's a degree of trust that has to go there. Officials say assistant principal Laura Rose Carroll and her daughter, 17-year-old Emily Rose Grover, illegally accessed other students' accounts so Grover would be elected homecoming queen. The investigation into the scheme started in November after the Escambia County School District reported hundreds of students' accounts at Tate High School had been hacked. Those accounts containing sensitive information like medical history, test scores, and personal information. School officials also discovered 117 homecoming court votes, all cast from the same IP address. So what kind of consequence could this mother-daughter duo face? It's all coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Monaco Sarabdi, ABC News, New York. Spurs had a night of rest. We'll be back on the court tonight after a win in Detroit. The Silver and Black are on their way to Chicago to play the Bulls. Tip-off is scheduled for this evening at 7 o'clock. You can watch it live on Fox Sports Southwest or catch the highlights tomorrow morning right here on GMSA. And trending on KSET.com, artists are wanted for a massive downtown installation. The San Antonio River Authority is calling on Bear County artists to apply to create a mural for the San Pedro Creek Culture Park. It will be a permanent five-panel mural once the new park is finished being constructed. There must be two to five members per team, and the deadline to apply is March 24th by 5 p.m. Everyone must also be at least 18 year olds. 18 years old. We have all those rules right now on our website at kset.com. San Antonio celebrating St. Patrick's Day. There will be some changes because of the ongoing pandemic, though. For the second year in a row, there will be no parade or festival. However, the river is dyed green and will be green for the rest of the day. Restaurants are open along the river walk as well, and many have holiday specials. We have a full list of St. Patrick's Day celebrations on kset.com. A little different than last year. A little bit. Yeah. Time now is 626 and about 52, 60 degrees right now. President Biden addressing the crisis along the southern border. We'll hear what he had to say and how dire the situation is. And taking a look out with Trans Guide, you can see the roads are wet, so be careful out there. Also expecting some rain and wind. That's 281 at Hildebrand. We'll be right back. This morning, police continue to search for the suspect who fatally shot a man at a Northwest Side hotel. Good morning, I'm Sarah Acosta. What police know about this fatal incident? A police officer on regular patrol makes a disturbing discovery, a body right in the middle of this intersection. I'm Katrina Weber, I'll have that story. Coming up, the crisis at the U.S. southern border. Why President Biden is telling migrants not to come. I'm Andrew Dimbert in Washington, D.C. with the latest.
And outside with live cam, if you're just now waking up, a front is moving through the area. With it, rain showers, and then behind it, gusty winds and a red flag warning for many of our counties. Hi, good morning. It is Wednesday, March 17th, and St. Patrick's Day. It's going to be a windy one. It really is, and Mike says the windy conditions have already begun on this St. Patrick's Day. He joins us now with more on that and the high fire danger that comes with it. Yes, indeed, and that's going to be uh, really kicking in throughout the rest of the afternoon. You know, yesterday we were concerned about the potential for some severe weather, and that's still the situation well up to the north of our area. And it's funny because as this line of uh, rain continued to move on through here this morning, it was... It was sort of falling apart. Even when I got into work about three this morning, it looked very impressive and there were a lot of thunderstorms and then that was about it. Now we did have some rain out there, so the uh, the roads are definitely on the damp side. Temperatures, what's interesting is 72 right now at Pleasanton. That's where we were just about an hour and a half ago. The front moved through and temperatures continue to drop down. 59 Bernie stage, low 50s in the hill country. I think we're going to be actually dropping down a couple of more degrees in the next few hours. And the wind is out of the north west at 12 miles. Now this doesn't seem all that impressive, but we do have some pretty good wind gusts. As a matter of fact, when the front moved through out there at the airport was gusting to 40 miles per hour, 30 mile per hour wind gust, New Braunfels 24 right now. Stinson, so the front is working its way on through. And again, now it's still a fairly decent line of rain, but a couple of hours ago it was much more impressive. There are some pretty good thunderstorms well up to the north, but again, those are all staying up there to the north of us. So uh, right around Pleasanton and uh, well, heading over toward Gonzales. Uh, Seguin, you've gotten some of these showers as well, and, but here in town, just a few stragglers in behind, and that's pretty much going to be about it, and this will continue to move on out to the uh, east and clear on out as the morning rolls on. And as we were talking about then, on the heels of that, red flag warning goes into effect 10 o'clock up until 7 o'clock this evening for almost all of the area. It does include San Antonio west and south from there. Very dry air. Dew points have dropped off already about 25 degrees to 30 degrees and those blustery winds all day long. Also, wind advisories are in effect or going to affect later on today. A whole slew of allergens out there. Everything seems to be in bloom. Thank goodness every, most everything's on the low side except for Hackberry. Showers, uh, you know, maybe a leftover storm well off to the east. There is still a very small chance that still could have one of those storms or east or northeast. And then uh, winds out of going to be breezy all day long. Upper 70s, beautiful day today, very, very dry air. But of course, we have that red flag warning. And then tomorrow, cooler, sunny, breezy, and we're going to be staying kind of on the coolish side throughout the rest of the week as well as the weekend. Details in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority and Samuel King, and despite the windy, wet roads, hadn't been too awfully bad out there. Yeah, just some uh, minor incidents here or there, uh, Mike. This is the uh, situation 35 at uh, Evans off to the side there. You can see there's some police activity. Some uh, there's a crash at FM 306 that we'll get some more information on coming up. In the meantime, let's take a look here at the maps uh, this morning and you can see as though as Mike was saying, the rain has been moving out, but the, the damage has been left behind, so to speak, on the roads, uh, wet roads throughout most uh, of the area. So if you are someone who's starting your commute, now, uh, be mindful of that. Even though rain may not be falling where you are, the roads uh, might certainly be wet. I have some delays here at I-10 East at Loop 410. I see most of those delays now on uh, Loop 410. There's that construction zone out there, so watch out for that. Uh, taking a look at some of the travel times between uh, 410 uh, and 1604 and I-10, six minutes uh, each direction, so that's still uh, fairly good, so that's a good thing there. Uh, looking at travel times across uh, the region, if you're coming in from Seguin, on I-10 into downtown, 30 minutes, 24 minutes from Bernie, 26 minutes from New Braunfels, 30 minutes on 37 from the Pleasanton area. And we'll have another update coming up. Our top story this morning, police are still searching for the suspect who fatally shot a man at a hotel on the city's northwest side. It happened at the Home Suites off Northwest Loop 410 near Babcock. Our Sarah Costa has more on what we know about the suspect. Good morning. Police say that suspect ran off from this hotel and jumped the fence at the back of the hotel on foot. Police don't have a lot of information on that suspect other than that he was wearing some dark colored clothing. But here's what we know so far about this fatal shooting. Police say they were called out just after three o'clock this mo morning to the Home Suites Hotel off the Northwest Loop 410. When they arrived, they found a man in his 30s dead from gunshot wounds to the head and stomach. 
Police say three people were in the hotel room when the shooting happened. A woman and two men. The men knew each other, according to police, and allegedly got into an argument. And that's when police say the suspect pulled out a gun and shot the victim four times. Police continue to an interview several other witnesses from nearby hotel rooms. And at this point, they continue to search for that suspect. From the northwest side, I'm Sarah Acosta, KSAT 12 News. Mark and Stephanie. Thank you, Sarah. San Antonio police are trying to figure out what happened to a man who was found dead in the middle of a busy street. An officer made that discovery overnight. Our Katrina Weber is live where it happened at South Hackberry and Martin Luther King Drive. Now, Katrina, you mentioned earlier that police are calling this suspicious. Well, they are. Uh, they say that is because the man had severe head trauma. They're not sure, though, how he suffered those injuries, whether he was perhaps shot or maybe hit by a car. That's something they're still trying to sort out. But it did happen here at South Hackberry and Martin Luther King. You can see that the street is clear now. But if you look at the video, you will see it was qu a quite different scene around 2.30 this morning. Police had this area roped off. They did call in homicide investigators uh, as well as traffic investigators to try to get to the bottom of this, but the last word we had from them is that they were tr still trying to sort it out. They were going to count on the medical examiner to determine how that man died and perhaps paint some light on what happened to him. The only thing that they could tell us is that he appeared to be in his 30s. Again, an officer uh, doing routine patrols stumbled upon the body here around 2.30 this morning. Reporting live on the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. And Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton is trying to protect Texans from outrageous unpaid electric bills related to last month's winter storm. Paxton is suing Gritty Energy under the Texas Deceptive Trade Practices Act for price gouging customers during the winter storm. The Attorney General's action is designed to help 24,000 Texans who could not pay the high energy bills, but the action is also designed to help those who did pay the unexpectedly high electric bills get a refund. Gritty filed for Chapter 11 in bankruptcy on Monday with over $29 million owed to ERCOT. Right now, 637, the situation at the southern U.S. border worsening by the day. Top U.S. officials say they are bracing for more migrants to come as thousands of unaccompanied children overrun border facilities meant for adults. Calls President Biden to urge migrants not to come to the United States. ABC Andrew Dimbert has more. And good morning. The children making this treacherous journey to the U.S. border alone aren't supposed to be held for more than three days, but some are staying a full week or even more, sharing tight spaces, crammed inside tents, some even sleeping on floors as the White House works to find more shelters. A humanitarian crisis brewing at the border. The U.S. immigration system strained as a surge of migrant arrivals desperately tried to reach U.S. soil. More than 4,200 are children housed in government-run detention facilities. Two lawyers who were let in paint the troubling picture of inhumane conditions for the unaccompanied children, some forced to sleep on floors. Around 40 to 50 kids without their parents sharing spaces like these. That is where they would spend their entire day. The number of children making the journey without their parents jumping 25% since last week. In an exclusive interview with ABC News, President Joe Biden says his message to migrants is, Don't come. We're in the process of getting set up. Don't leave your town or city or community. When asked if it was a mistake not to anticipate this surge, Biden saying this also happened during the Trump presidency. Well, first of all, there was a surge the last two years in, in, in 19 and 20. This one might be worse. No, well, it could be, but here's the deal. We're sending back people. To and now the Biden administration says it's bringing in FEMA to help open new temporary facilities. Andrew Dimbert, ABC News, Washington. In your morning headlines, the U.S. House of Representatives passed a child abuse prevention bill as experts and advocates raise alarm about unreported abuse during the pandemic. It would establish national standards for tracking and reporting child deaths and mistreatment and create a system for states to share information from their child abuse and neglect registries. It will now go to the U.S. Senate for approval. Russia, China and Iran all attempted to disrupt the 2020 presidential election. That is according to declassified information from the U.S. intelligence community. In particular, it said Moscow tried to slander Joe Biden during the campaign while undermining voters confidence in the electoral process. 
The report did not say if Warren Actor tried to alter the technical aspects of the election, such as casting ballots. Lawmakers are looking to extend the deadline for the Paycheck Protection Program. The deadline to apply is March 31st. However, lawmakers approved another $7 billion for the program in the COVID stimulus bill. But representatives say the additional funds are of little use if the March deadline isn't pushed. There is now bipartisan support for legislation that would extend the program to May 31st. Right now at 640, about 60 degrees. While over 50% of Americans do not believe in bad luck superstition, some credit their accomplishments and good fortune to good luck. After the break, we're going to share how to make the most of your luck. Six forty-four today is St. Patrick's Day, and luck isn't just for the Irish. While more than fifty percent of Americans do not believe in bad luck superstitions like breaking a mirror or spilling salt, many people still attribute opportunities and accomplishments to having good luck. David Sears breaks down the science of what exactly luck is. I have a multi-purpose tool that I keep in my wallet. I have a keychain with the number three on it. Yeah, my wife. But is it possible to forge your own luck? Experts say to have a chance, you need to take a chance. If you want to win a game where the odds are very low, you still have to participate to win. And if you want to win the lottery, no amount of wishing for it will help you. You have to buy a ticket. Well, let's put it this way. I've played the lottery and I've never won, so maybe it is luck and I just don't have the luck to win the lottery. The science of luck tends to be less about pure chance and more about preparation meeting opportunity. Our brains are actually more involved with luck than we think. Experts say the unexpected lucky actions tend to come from our subconscious, a phenomenon called preemptive perception. So whether you call it luck, intuition, or just a good guess, if it feels right, do it. If you're trying to guess what someone's thinking, your guess might not be as lucky as you think. Experts say that our brains naturally mirror people we're trying to empathize with, making it easier to predict their intentions. So if you find yourself more empathic to others, you may want to try your hand at poker. David Sears, KZ 12 News. Right now, 645. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Uh, how are the roads looking now? I know it was pretty soggy earlier. Pretty uh, soggy, and we were mentioning that 281 at Hildebrand. The view there looks pretty slick. You can see the emergency vehicles uh, moving in there. There's some sort of incident, uh, maybe a crash, but honestly, uh, we're not quite sure yet. But you can see they're uh, heading northbound and almost there under the bridge. And we'll take a look at the maps here uh, real quick just to show you a little better idea of where this is. So this is northbound 281. Uh, this is uh, up almost here. This is where that slowdown is. Traffic down to 20. Uh, one miles per hour. So if you're someone who heads north of downtown, maybe up to 1604, taking you 14 minutes right now in each direction. And let's take a look here again. This is Transguide. You see a truck here trying to get out of the way uh, of this backup here at 281. We're working again, trying to get some more information on what's going on here. But this is uh, one of the worst backups we've seen. Uh, there. I hope I'm not blocking something, Mike. Mike, you're <laughs> reacting to something there uh, that we're uh, seeing there. So uh, we'll get some more information uh, on this in our, in our next up right here coming in a few minutes, guys. No, I, I apologize, yeah. but there was a car. He was moving over into the next lane and another car coming up on him and they almost collided. Yeah. So. Yes. Yeah, that's his... Uh, not something you want to see here. We had a relatively good morning, except for a crash overnight on in the crossroads. But uh, this is a seems to be a pretty uh, serious situation here as we're wrapping up the newscast. Yeah, drivers need to watch out there. Thank you, Samuel. Well, good case in point, despite the fact that most of the rain is done, we still have wet roads around the area. Uh, not only there, 281 around uh, Hildebrand, almost Basin, but also over there at uh, 410 by the airport. Temperatures, again, have dropped down a good 10 degrees or even more in some cases as the front moved on through. Pleasanton, you've dropped down a couple of more notches as the front moved on through your area, and it will continue to uh, drop down. The humidity has really plummeted. I mean, these numbers have dropped down dew point temperatures about 25 degrees that were in the upper 60s. It was just almost steam bath humidity earlier this morning, but now the dry air comes on in here. The wind is also another factor 10 15 close to 20 miles per hour, and we've got wind gusts 31 at Pleasanton 30 New Braunfels. We hit a wind gust of 40 earlier this morning as the front moved on through, and this is what it looks like again here in town. Most of the rain has come to an end. Now we do have a couple of I want to go back to this one, a couple of pretty good cells. This one up there, which developed out in Fredericksburg and most everything as expected. The 
uh, heavier thunderstorms have been well up to the uh, north and to the northeast, and we'll still continue to see some of these showers work their way off to the east. Carn City, uh, Nixon, you're getting some of this uh, well, okay showers here and there, and a few stragglers there on the southeast side of town. There is still a very small chance for um, one or two of those to be potentially severe, but mainly up to the north. One of the gee whiz things this morning, and you don't often see this as far as the threat for severe weather. Obviously, it does increase going off to the east. And now the Storm Prediction Center, scale of one to five. Yesterday, it was this moderate risk from Memphis all the way down almost to New Orleans. And now they've added in the high risk for severe weather right there, right around Jackson, straddling between uh, Jackson and Memphis along I-55. That's basically a sure thing that it's an explosive situation is the best way to put it, that they're going to be getting severe weather and tornadoes there in uh, central Mississippi and throughout the, the mid south. So that's something you don't see that often when they put that high risk on there as far as the uh, severe threat. OK, back to us. We've got the red flag warning goes into effect 10 o'clock this morning up until 7 o'clock this evening, windy conditions and very, very dry air. And of course, the fact that even though we did have a little bit of rain overnight, it really didn't help all that much. So it is a, a kind of a tinderbox out there and wind advisories are also in effect. Now, as far as the dry air, it's going to be sticking around for the next couple of days. Very pleasant the next couple of days. So that's going to allow some coolish mornings and nice warm up in the afternoon, but still staying on the coolish side. Jackets the next couple of mornings are not going to be a bad idea. And a lot of sunshine as well. Jackets and sunglasses. 73 degrees today at noon. Plenty of sunshine around here. And again, very windy conditions today. Wind out of the northwest about 15, 25 miles per hour, gusting at times. 78 for a high temperature. Tomorrow we drop down into the 40s, starting off mid upper 40s, mid 40s uh, Friday morning, low 40s Saturday morning. Subtract, what, six, seven, eight degrees from that. So we're looking at some 30s even in the hill country. Oh, wow. wow. Yeah. And then highs, look at that, only 69 on Friday. Sunshine, more clouds Sunday, and uh, maybe a couple of showers by Tuesday. Pretty nice weekend. Yeah, yeah. but Good like weekend. one more chilly day before the official start of spring, I guess. You go figure. The first start of, the start of spring, Saturday morning, is going to be 43. <laughs> Thank you, Mike. It's about 10 till 7 and about 60 degrees. And parenting is a team effort, and when it comes to mom's mental health, Dad can help. Tomorrow on GMSA, some simple things you can do. Outside with live cam, another look as you're waking up on a Wednesday morning. The news you need to know before you go is next. Police are calling it a suspicious death. A man found here in the middle of this east side intersection. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. It was a police officer who made the discovery around 2.30 here at South Hackberry and Martin Luther King. The police say that that man who was found dead in the middle of the street had suffered some sort of head wound, uh, some sort of head trauma is how they put it. They believe he was in his 30s. Police were not sure right away whether he may have been shot or perhaps hit by a, a driver who then took off. They are still investigating all of that, counting on the medical examiner to paint some light on exactly how this man died. But they are calling the death suspicious at this point. Reporting from the east side, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Today on GMSA 9, Katie Blake has a perfect activity for St. Patrick's Day. She will teach us how to make shamrocks and launch them to learn about the different types of energy. So to make the launcher, you will need an empty paper towel roll, a pencil, two rubber bands, tape, scissors, and a hole puncher. For the shamrocks, you need cotton balls or green pom-poms, pipe cleaner, and a hot glue gun. Tune in today at 9 for Katie's Science Lab. And earlier we saw some big problems on 281 and Hildebrand. Let's go ahead and check in with Samuel King. Yeah, Mark and Stephanie, we have uh, confirmed that this is a crash here, a little uh, northbound 281 north of uh, the view you see here. You see uh, the back up some emergency vehicles there, so definite slowdown. Uh, here's, here it is on the maps, 11 miles per hour now. The traffic barely crawling there northbound on 281. Also have some delays downtown now, traffic down to 19 miles per hour. Again, 281 northbound, Hildebrand to almost 
pretty much at a standstill, Mike. Thanks, Sam. Yeah, roads are still wet, even though most of the rain has moved on out of here. 50s in the hill country, low 60s here in town and windy conditions. We got winds and they're gusting about, uh, well, 25, close to 30 miles per hour. And the rain continues to work its way off to the east. We do have the red flag warnings going to affect later on this morning, as well as wind advisories. We're going to have plenty of sunshine today and breezy conditions up to 78 later on today. Happy St. Patrick's Day. May your day be lucky. Yes, uh, be careful with that one. Have a great day. We'll see you back here at 9.